politics to a, to a community that knows nothing, nothing about, about Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Nothing about Georgia. You want it to be beginner friendly, something to be consumed, but something of value. All the attention in the world right now is on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And we want to use this spotlight to also highlight Georgia because there's a case for Georgia. There is a very prominent case for Georgia. We've seen... Please, please. There is like, we've seen what would happen if Russia aggresses and if Russia takes over and replaces a government. So this is the perfect time to get Georgia out there. Okay. Okay? okay. So, uh, let's go. Already? Yeah. So before we start, I want you to introduce yourself. How old are you? Profession? Uh, what have you studied? So we can get started. So hello, my name is Georgi Titvinidze. I'm from Tbilisi, Georgia. I'm 24 years old. I'm, I have a bachelor's degree in international relations and a master's degree is also in international relations. So living in Tbilisi, trying to be active member of the Georgian society and try to be involved in the decision making of my country. Okay. They say yes, use activist. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, the whole world's attention is obviously on Ukraine. We're following the situation with all of its development. I want you to tell me, how do you feel about the situation as a Georgian citizen? So, as a Georgian, like I'm trying to use, I'm going to use this term in Georgian as for the whole, whole of the Georgian society, like all the ethnic groups. As a Georgian, I'm really terrified what is happening in the Ukraine right now. Ukraine and the Georgia, we are sharing the same history, we are sharing the same history, we were occupied by Russia for more than 70 years. Right now, what is happening in the Ukraine is a terrible not only for the Georgians, but the whole world, especially in the post-Soviet countries. We can see that a lot of people are struggling, we can see that a lot of people are um, fighting and they are fighting really hard, but right now what is happening, it kills my heart. Okay. Now, do you feel threatened for Georgia's safety and sovereignty as a country? by the situation that is happening in Ukraine right now? Uh, you know, personally, I believe that the Ukrainian people will stand against Russia and Russian Federation will eventually fall. But even if Russian Federation will fall against the Ukraine, I'm feeling threatened about the Georgia still. Because the threat exists more than two centuries. Uh, you know that we have two occupied territories, which is Abkhazeti and Samachablo. So the threat is always here. They are within the borders in the 100 meters of our main road. So threat is always here. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that um, Georgia is still threatened because, as you said, it could be a repeat of what happened in 2008 when two breakaway niches were installed, as in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, Abkhazia and Samachablo in Georgia. Now, most importantly, do you feel like the Georgian government's response to this situation was adequate because it surprised a lot of people? Uh, you know, sometimes the government will not interface the real face of the population. Everybody in Georgia is mm, supporting Ukraine and the government, what the government is doing right now, it's not good. Um, government is acting like um, really bad because they don't know how to respond on this issue and on these topics. Uh, when the, there was war in 1991 in Abkhazeti and 1992 in South Ossetia, the Ukrainian friends were with us all the time. In 2008, Ukrainians were standing with us. We need to be right now with Ukraine because we are stronger together. And even the motto of our country is strength is in unity. So if we will be united, we're going to do everything good. But right now, the government's response is terrible. It does not represent you. It doesn't represent not me, not the Georgian society, not everybody, nobody in this country. It is very apparent by the protests that we have seen, the global support that the Georgian people have shown towards the government. Now, we want to look at the other side of the coin. Obviously, the Georgian-Russian political relationship is a very important topic in history of Georgia. How important is it to maintain it or to disconnect it now? Uh, from 2008, when the, from 2006, when the main conflicts already arrived in Georgian territory, uh, Georgian government decided to not be involved in the Russian market like Mali. So we were having the really good relations with the European Union, with the United States and all other countries, especially in Asia as well. But since the new government came from 2012, all of our population and all of our goods are going to Russia. This is a case which all for all of the Georgian people is really bad. We want to go out from Russian market to be involved more in European Union, more to Turkey, to the Arabic countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the idea for Georgia. We don't. We want to have some relations, but till the Georgian territories and until the territories of the Ukraine and the Moldova will be occupied, we cannot have the proper relations with the occupier. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a proper relationship with an occupier. I understand. Now, when looking at the situation, 
um, the current ruling party here in Georgia, the Georgian Dream. The main influence of uh, rule in Russia is mainly oligarchs. Money, it controls everything. A very worthy point to note out is that the main funder, let's say, of the Georgian Dream is Bidzina Ivanishvili, and a man who has prominent business in Russia and considerable influence in Georgia. What does that tell us? It tells us that Georgia as a post-Soviet country, I don't want to refer it as Georgia as a post-Soviet country, but we are still a post-Soviet territories. Uh, the influence of the Russian, Russian politics and the Russian interest in Georgia is really high. We are fighting against it, but you know, you can, you're can you going to see that Russia is bigger than us. They have really big, soft, really soft power involved in Georgian politics. A lot of Georgian political parties, a lot of the TV stations, radios, newspapers are still pro-Russian. Okay, so the funding is the main main key why the, right now Russia is controlling much of interest and in the politics in Georgia. But people are fighting against us, like me, you, and everybody who is living in Georgia, who is U.S., who is understanding what is happening right now. We are fighting against it, but Russia has a really big interest with us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, because they have to maintain their uh, domestic you know, interests. You know, they want to see uh, authoritarian countries near its borders because uh, the domino effect of the democratic countries will eventually overthrow the government in Russia. So if Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Baltic states, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan will be the democratic countries, it's going to overthrow the ruling party of United Russia in Federation. Okay, okay. Makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, back to Ukraine. Now, when we're looking at Ukraine, and we're looking at Georgia, you're seeing a very similar pattern with the Donbass disconnect and Abkhazia and South Ossetia, Abkhazia and South Chablo. Is Can we say that the same thing is happening in both scenarios? Is there differences? I'm going to give you the explanation. Okay, it's, It started in 1918 you know, when the um, Tsar regime was uh, overthrown in Russia by, by the Bolsheviks. So this started after that. They, you know, they joined, uh, Georgia, they occupied Georgia in 1921. I believe same goes to Ukraine and all of the other countries which are right now in the, in the Soviet, in, previously in the Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet Union. Yeah. So I'm going to explain to you. They were creating autonomous republics. They were creating the regions which are not uh, having anything to do with the autonomous regions. So if the Russia will lose the influence against these countries, they're going to work as a bombs. This happened in Abkhazeti, this happened in, as it's called, South Ossetia, it's called in Nagorno-Karabakh, it happened in Moldova as a Transnistria. Uh, same goes to Ukraine and Donetsk, Donbass region, Crimea. Um, Belarus is already occupied by Russia. Uh, if the Baltic states were not acting really good, they will also will be, again, the Russias. Uh, Russia is trying to take the territories from the Kazakhstan as well, the northern territories where majority of the people are Russian speaking. So this is happened because of the Soviet Union. This started from the uh, doctrines of Lenin when he decided to create an autonomous republics in the regions of the Soviet countries. Mm -hmm. And the situation in the Ukraine and the Georgia is the same. This is a key tools which Russia is using to control our countries. If Georgia, if Ukraine will not have the dispute territories, we're going to have the full opportunity to join the European Union and the opportunity to join the North Atlantic Alliance, NATO. Okay. Now, a very interesting point to look at is that, um, for example, in the 2008 war, we have different sources looking at this scenario. Some people saying that Georgia instigated the war. Some people saying that uh, Russia were sending peacekeepers to uh, settle the dispute in Abkhazia and Samachablo, South Ossetia. What do you think of that narrative? Um, you see, there is no peacekeeper which is Russian. Okay, so this is a stand sentiment which I'm using a lot. Uh, Russian can be a peacekeeper in the conflict which he is starting. Okay, with the country starting the war, they cannot be the peacekeepers. So the, what happened in 2008 in Georgia, in the region of Samachablo, is that Russian troops came into the Georgian territory. We were trying to defeat our, defend ourselves, but Russians sent more and more troops to occupy our territories and to send to, to, this, to regions to give them independence. So the Russia is aggressor. Georgia's uh, total area is 69,000 kilometers and the Russia is 17 million. Uh, one of the strongest army in the world. You know, it will be unfair if Georgians started war against Russia. So, I believe Russians are aggressors. Same is happening in Georgia, what is happening right now in Ukraine. In Ukraine. Okay. Um, can we also draw similarities to what happened in 2014 in Ukraine, in Crimea preferably? 
Is there a connection to that? Is it a similar course of action or is it a different scenario? Uh, I believe it's, it's the same. Okay, They were trying to annex and they already annexed the Crimean Peninsula. They, they are doing this to have um, like disputes regions for Ukraine and for Georgia. If Georgians and Ukrainians will gain the full territorial sovereignty in their borders, they will eventually will join the European Union and the NATO. So this is a main threat for the Russians. If these countries, if the countries of uh, post-Soviet uh, regions will be eventually European democracies, it's gonna, um, it's gonna destroy the Russia. It's gonna, it's gonna destroy Russia. Okay, now uh, moving a bit away from Russia, a prominent political figure in both Georgia and Ukraine, a very common one would be Saakashvili. Uh, us in the West, we don't know much about Saakashvili yet. So. I want you to tell me about his involvement in this situation from 2008 and even before that, if you could include. And is his involvement in Ukraine's politics as well valid or not? Uh, so for me, like Mikhail Saakashvili, for me, um, as a Georgi, it is, he's a really good guy. Okay, From 2003, he was the president of the Georgia. And before 2003, Georgia was one of the most corrupted country in the world, in the many you know, world statistics. Uh, we had no electricity, no clean water, no roads in the way. Uh, nothing was happening in Georgia. Everybody was corrupted and Russian influence in our country was terribly high. What he did was the great reforms. Uh, our country is becoming a European democracy. We have everything. We have the basic goods for our countries. Economic is growing. Uh, democratic industry is going up. We are having a good relations with the EU, NATO, and Asian countries. We have opening the new relations with the Gulf countries as well. A lot of interests are coming there as well. So this guy was a good for Georgian. Okay, but he did really some things which are which are um, not to talk about right now. But for me, he was a good president. Let, let's go to the Ukraine. Uh, same thing was happening in Ukraine before the Euromaidan. So the Russian oligarchs, Ukrainian oligarchs with the control of the Russia were holding the government. Mikhail Saakashvili went there, tried to fight them. He was doing really good. He was the governor of the Odessa as well. And I, as I know, I was not in the Ukraine, but as I know, he was doing a great job there as well great reforms, fighting against the oligarchy, and trying to create some democratic values there as well. So for Georgia and for Ukraine, he's a really notable person, and right now, when he's in the prison, I'm feeling really bad. Okay. Now, we've established a line of similarity between how there is a control of oligarchy that happened in Ukraine, but now they've been liberated from it. And obviously, we can't deny the control, some sort of control of oligarchy here present in Georgia. So you're telling me that for Georgia to gain and to step away from Russian influence in the government, do we need to step away from the uh, ruling party? There should be any type of reforms? Uh, for me, I believe that we need to have the coalition uh, in the parliament. So when we are having the one ruling party, for example, I'm not talking about the Georgian dream, I'm telling any of the ruling party which going to have, it's going to have their own interests. So the best option for right now for Georgia is to have the coalition parties you know, in entering the parliament, not one ruling party. Okay, and the situation about the oligarchy, oligarchy is never creating the democracy. It is a, a feudal structure, just change its name. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Now, we want to address the buzzwords that are happening right now. A lot of people are referring to Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, they're waving the EU flag. We want to see if those countries can join the EU. I want you to walk me through it. Do you think Georgia is a European country? Georgia is a European country. Uh, maybe a lot of people don't know that the first uh, Europeans like the are from Georgia. Zezva and Mzia, they're, they're ancestors of the European people. Culturally, religiously, um, with the values, Georgia is tending to the Europe. It is in the Transcaucasia, which is a region which is connecting Europe to the Asia. Some of the people may refer to Georgia as in Asia because the Caucasus Mountains is a territorial border, border of the Europe, but uh, it's not the borders and not the land which is uh, creating the society. Society is created by its values, and the Georgian values right now are European. We were always the European country. We were always uh, trying to be, and the uh, history of the Georgia is fighting and it's a wars to get into the Europe. Um, you, if you're going to go through the history of the Georgia, all the time we were with the alliances of the European countries. 
So I will definitely say that we are the European culture, we are European society, and sooner or later we're going to join the European family. Okay. Now, we've established about the European Union. We want to, to walk through NATO. NATO is a more of a touchy subject because, you know, Georgia is a country that borders Russia. How good, how bad, how would it affect the politics between Russia and Georgia to have a bordering country join NATO? Uh, we having a, another neighbor, which is Turkey, which is also a NATO member. He's our strategic alliance all the time. We're helping each other. So for us, we don't care if Russia going to have the bad attitude or if Russian politics will be uh, in the bad position if Georgia will join the NATO. Bal Baltic states already are the NATO members. Sooner or later, Finland will also join NATO. Already the talks are going through. Now, and, um, you know, Russia and other countries cannot decide what other countries will do. This is our self-determination. We're going to do whatever we will decide as a democratic society. If the majority of the people in Georgia wants to join NATO and then we are uh, fully with the NATO standards, we're going to definitely join NATO. And uh, sorry for these words, we don't care, care about Russia. Fair enough, fair enough. More than fair enough. Now, what do you think would be the biggest obstacle for the Georgian people, not the government, we've already established that, for the Georgian people to join the EU? Will there be any obstacles? Um, you know, 90% of the Georgians want to join you. Even the most orthodox people in this country, they are pro-European Union. The values, the ideas may seem, um, they are same, okay? We are having some disputes, but these disputes are easily to handle. But the majority of the people, majority of the society is willing to join the EU, and I believe we are going to go there. So together with the Ukraine and Moldova as well, as the Eastern European Partnership countries, we're going to go and enter the EU. So do you think there are no obstacles? No. Only uh, the obstacle which we are having right now is Russia and Russian uh, involvement in our country. Anything rather than Russia, we are having no political issues. Even the ruling party right now is pro-European. So everybody, nobody can be pro-Russian in Georgia right now. Mm -hmm. And what does moving into the EU and NATO spell for the future of Georgia? How do you envision Georgia, let's say, if it joined the EU within the next months? How would this affect its future? First of all, we're going to have the market of more than 450 million people. So this is a really great market for us, and this is an opportunity for our economic to grow high, to GDP to grow higher, and the democratic interest and the values to appear into our country. We, I'm going to call Georgia as a democratic country, but we have a lot of learn, a lot to learn from the European countries. So I believe we are the emerging European democracy, which needs to have more interest from the EU. If we're going to have more relations with the European Union countries, we will be much more democratic, and we're going to see and we're going to understand more what we can do with our lives. So you, joining the EU is the best opportunity for Georgia to become um, like a good country. A better country. Better country, yeah. Better education, better Everything. learning opportunities, but more liberal. Yes, of course. Okay. So, you know, the idea of the Georgia is to be liberal. I'm calling it European democracy. So we want to have the liberal values implemented in everywhere. We are trying to do it, but still we need some help from somebody. Because, you know, we are doing it on our own. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to receive some help from the different countries, it will be best, better for us. Mm -hmm. if, I, if you want me to be honest with you. Yeah, no. This is a field where we want to be as honest and as clear as transparent uh, as possible with each other. Do you have anything to say? Mm. Uh, the current situation with the protest seems to be a very Georgian way of handling um, crisis or handling disagreement with uh, whatever the government is doing. Um, how do you view peaceful protests that go on for long periods of time as a political tool? And how do you view the process of um, Georgian development into a more democratic and a uh, more free state as a Georgian person. So how can the Georgian people influence uh, and move the country forward? Uh, Georgian people uh, were always influenced in the politics. So Georgian society and Georgian politics are always really 
uh, together. Okay. So, but right now, what we are facing in our country is that the government go is in stepping in the right in the left way, and the people are standing in the right. So right now, we are having a really big dispute, and the peaceful protests are going all the way in the Georgia. If if you're gonna go to the scene in any suburbs in any territories of the Georgia, you're gonna see that there are Ukrainian flags. There are the flags of the EU and the Georgia. We are supporting uh, the Ukrainians and the peaceful protests will go on till the Russian Federation will stop the occupation of the Ukraine. So what we are doing right now, uh, we are trying to change the attitude of our politicians. Uh, our president, Salome Zurabishvili, is already involved in the you know, peace talking all over the, in the Europe. But before this peaceful protest, she was not acting so, so bravely right now. So bravely. But right now, she is doing some job. Even our um, prime minister, Irak Garibashvili, already signed the petition to join the EU. And, you know, uh, Georgian society will definitely affect Georgian politics because we are a small country and uh, small protests uh, in, are viewed everywhere. So even the small protest uh, affects Georgian government. Okay. Now, the only type of help that Georgians are able to offer to the Ukrainians right now is soft help. Protests, um, equipment, clothes. How does that make you feel that you are unable to provide any Mili military action that they actually need to survive? Okay, I'm gonna explain to you. The military support from the Georgian side is already in the Ukraine. So a lot of the Georgian legioners are in the Ukraine as a Georgian national league in the Ukraine. So we were we are always fighting with together. Okay, a lot of Georgians are in the Ukraine. Even the uh, president's uh, first helper in the negotiation is Georgian right now with Russia. So Georgians and Ukrainians, we are always together. Okay, uh, if we cannot help the mili we cannot send the full military support in uh, Ukraine. It's understandable because it means that. We are going to declare the war to the Russia. But a lot of people, a lot of volunteers are going to Ukraine to help the people. We are sending a lot of humanitarian things to the Ukraine. Right now, if you're going to go to the parliament, you're going to see that there are a lot of packages which every day is sent to the Ukraine. And a lot of uh, companies, a lot of uh, things are helping. Even the incomes which they are receiving, they are sending to the Ukraine. So uh, there is a, right now some campaign like this. If the Ukrainian people will come to Georgia, all the hotels, all the apartments, it's free for them. Okay, so we are trying to do everything what we can, but this is really small steps to them. We need to do even more because when we were fighting against Russians, Ukrainians were next to us all the time. Okay. Now that's the sentiment towards one of your neighbors, the Ukrainian people. Uh, we've had our fair discussion about the Russian government. I want you to tell me what is the sentiment towards Russian people right now here in Georgia. Look, Russian people are good. Personally, for me, Russian culture, letter, Russian literature, music, cuisine is amazing. We cannot say that Russian government is representing the Russian population. Same goes to Georgia, you see. So Russians are really good. Okay, uh, we're having a really good relations with the Russians for a lot of centuries. Even the Ukrainians and Russians, uh, they're calling uh, Russia, Ukraine and Belarus, it's called three, three sisters, uh, three sisters in, uh, in, in Russian. So they're countries uh, with a culturally, culturally really near to each other. And Georgians and Russians, we are getting really along with each other all the time. We are having a lot of Russian student, tourist students in our country. And we cannot say anything bad about Russian people, but Russian government... <laughs> okay, okay, because right now there's a growing sentiment here in Georgia to not allow Russians to come because um, a, a lot of narratives say that, you know, Russians are coming, they're occupying the country, they're buying all the areas. Do you have any comments on that? If uh, the you know uh, we cannot fully understand if those people who are coming into our country are occupiers, if they are really running from the Putin's regime, from Russian Federation, we need to accept them. Okay, uh, if some people are coming uh, running away from their countries because they are persecuted or they will be in the jails, of course, as a democratic society, we need to accept them and we need to try all the best what we can do. But, you know, uh, there is uh, outrage that some of the spies and some of the Russian uh, military groups may also enter the 